Alright, hey, welcome back to Simdog, episode 3! Here we go! So we've made it to level 7. Let's, um... Let's get fishing a little bit and then I will take a look and see if there's been time for folks to leave many uh, comments yet on the first two videos. Um, they really haven't been out that long when I'm recording this. I guess one of them's been out for maybe like 12 hours and all right, this rough order is about to end unfortunately. We do have a crucian order couple crucian orders cheap gibble order so we can still like make a little bit of hay here how much money do we have 23 so we just need another good like session here right and then we can um potentially get our third feeder if that's the direction we want to go let's go ahead and get set up we'll do um we'll start off over in this spot i think all right so let's think about what we're using here 14 that's fine we probably do need to go get some more um we need to make more bread. We're getting low on bread, believe it or not. Let's just go back to seven meter clip. Just wanna keep it really, really close right in here. And I'm gonna see how it seems. We'll do worm 16, is that what we wanna use? Unless we wanna use a 14, but I think we'll do 16. And um, so we'll have one bread, one worm. If the worm doesn't seem as good, we might go two bread. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Let's put this one kind of right off in here. In fact, I might go eight on this one. Eight clip. I'm not going to even put the float in there yet. Let's go ahead and get those soaking, though. Get that ground bait in the water. And see if we can't get on some fish here. So I know we need to make some more bread. So let's spend four silver on a bunch of bread and we'll just sit there making bread. We also I think we have enough sunflower oil. So let's get two of each crackers. The other thing we I want to do sometime crackers and millet porridge. I do at some point want to make some common uh, roach ground bait and try to target those a little bit. I'm just not sure exactly where where we'll do that, but um, let's make that ground bait and let's um, get some bread going. And then while we're waiting on fish, we'll check comments from the first couple videos. Again, they haven't been out very long, so we may not have a ton to go over yet, so I'll come back to them if uh, if there's more comments in the future. But I hope everyone is doing well, and uh, for me it is now the 12th of December, so happy Sunday everyone. Um, yeah, let's make a bunch of bread. So 0.6 on harvesting baits. We want to continue to run this number up. And then we also, after we get our third feeder, I guess, what we'll start doing then is, um, Probably crafting tea, eventually coffee, tea to start with for cooking and getting a shovel so that, um, because we want to see that. I mean, it, as soon as we have our like system of feeder rods going, we really want to be able to get that, um, I hear a fish on. It's a decent one. We want to be able to get that harvesting baits number way up there. That's an eyed. First time we've seen an eyed, and that was on worms. So let's put worms back out there, I guess. We also could try maggots in this spot. I mean, we know with, at least with Crucian Gibbles that the, um, the bread is just working really well. I 
we have a little bit more bread to make. Okay, 2.4% on harvesting baits. And I suppose we will... Mm, we've been doing worm, haven't we? Let's try maggots. Was 50 centimeters kind of where we landed over here in this spot? Seems to me that that was the case. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's look at some of the recent comments. Pretty good bite rate right now. There's a crucian. We could just try bread on the float too. It's one thing we haven't done because we've been using worm on the float. We could see how bread does. All right, so I don't know if I've talked about it here. Uh, actually, the video that I released before we started this leveling series um, was, I was fishing at Ladoga, but mostly what I was talking about was the an recent announcement that there's gonna be this imminent release of a new water body. So we have had a lot of comments on that video. Um, Kinusai says, good to see you back. We just had our second baby on the 8th, so I have zero time to fish right now. I'm sitting watching you fish while she's asleep so I can remember what normal norm, normalcy is like. Hopefully you can find the time to fish in maybe 20 years. or Hey, it'll come quicker than you realize, uh, but that's a special time. Congrats. Uh, that's awesome. So several people on this video, by the way, Indigo Gaming being the, being one of them said, hey, you'll, you'll, you'll catch more if you just throw straight the direction of the two stones. Six meter clip was the best for me. I got 80 to 90 trophies in three days. And uh, today, finally, my blue. That's awesome. Yeah, I might have to try that Ladoga spot again on my main. Because um, I did hear from a couple of different people that I wasn't really f casting in the most optimal direction when I did that. Uh, UK Carper says, as always, great RF4 content. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Oral Cal, very important comment. The final comma before the and is known as the Oxford comma. It can really help to avoid ambiguity. The only rule for it when writing is to be consistent in whether you use it or not. Thanks for that. I, I, you know, again, I always remembered using it when I was in school, but uh, I look at Ladoga too and I see a proof of concept for sea fishing. Wish they went straight for the real thing. Anyway, hopefully we'll see some t uh, wave tidal mechanics because that's what they need to master sea fishing. And yes, the first use of conventional reels. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. Very good comment. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Film, happy holidays. Good to see you. Happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas to everyone. WTF27PL says... Hi, M-Dog, I suggest you try a Xander spot at Sura. Uh, I put it in the trophy section of your Discord. Sounds like there were some trophy Xanders coming out at Sura. That's cool. That's, that's, not, uh, that's one of those not the most common of, of things. So good info there. I, I'm t I can tell I'm just missing float bites here because I'm reading comments, but... This will go a lot more smoothly when I'm when we're fully set up with bottom fishing. And Bavinock Gaming, always good to hear from Bavinock. I think Bavinock still streams RF4, so check his YouTube channel out. Um, was again talking about the direction that I was fishing at in terms of ideal spot there at Ladoga to get those blue tags. I think fly fishing is a long way off, Bavinock says. Nothing's been said about it in quite a while. They can put whatever wording for a new map release, but so far no species list, which is the general, uh, generally 
which the generally release and also no trailer. Yeah, I mean, typically, other than them saying it's imminent, typically, if something's really coming out within a week or so, we do have that preview trailer, right? So unless for some reason they're skipping that, we would still assume that at some point we're gonna get a trailer of the new map and then potentially it will release soon after that. Most maps we get a species list and then when the trailer, uh, the map comes out about a week later. Yeah, I agree with that. Welcome back. I actually was looking at your video from last year for the Christmas store in hopes we get another. Oh, uh, me too. I, I can't imagine that we won't get a store. My question is, will we get the actual event that, that I thought was really creative last year? Kyle Kidd. Well, what's up, Kyle Kidd? Says, hey, bud. Happy to see your face again. Thank you so much. It is good to be back. And by the way, as I'm sitting here just uh, talking, reading these videos, we're getting a very consistent bite rate here. Not the uh, best quality, but we'd expect the quality perhaps to improve as we move into nighttime. The other thing we need to start thinking about doing, not sure exactly when, but probably relatively soon, getting a little bit higher quality hooks and also getting a little bit larger hooks. When we're going for Crucian Gibbles, uh, I wouldn't mind using more like anywhere from like six to 10 size and um, try to focus on some of the larger ones. Brendo says, welcome back. Kluby says, nice. SF Medic Smith says, welcome back. And Zig says, reported for inactivity. That made me laugh out loud the first time I read that, by the way. Very good stuff. Okay, so from our first episode, which I recorded uh, early in the day yesterday, but it didn't actually release until last night. Um, Nikki Per Se says, it's that time of the year when M-Dog, M-Dog is starting tutorials. That's very true. Uh, SF Medic says, great for finding coordinates on all the maps. So here's the one of the issues is that I'm realizing that um, I'm realizing that I don't think you're able to post links. So I assume that SF Medic was actually posting a link for a resource. Because remember in the first video, the request I had was, hey, if there's any resources you think are really helpful for new players, you know, let us know. But it, it looks like the, the, the post where that had the link on it just didn't actually stay in the comments. So um, I'll have to figure out another way to, to get that info out there. Uh, Stupid Trader says, thought the Braves were out of the season when Acuna was injured being out for the season. Either way, congrats to Braves and go Cardinals. Yeah, hey, listen, any Braves fan or people involved with the Braves organization, I'm sure we all had that same thought when Acuna went down and it was a season-ending injury. The idea in that moment that the Braves would then find a way to uh, win the World Series would have been hard to imagine. So, uh, so pretty cool there that 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 actually worked out. And Acuna, I think, was a big part of the morale, cheering everybody on in the uh, in the dugout in the final push there. Uh, Kinnisal says, and my O's got the first pick in the draft, so there's that. Oh, I hope they got a good player. Uh, or will get a good player. Stupid Trader says, I live in Maryland for a few years, those poor uh, O's fans. Yeah, and that used to be such a great organization, right? The Baltimore Orioles. Um, And it has been a while since they have experienced very much success. Rank one on telescopic rods. That's cool. Uh, So yeah, you got to feel for those O's fans. Fetus Lord says, this is just what I wanted to see on this channel. Thanks so much. SF Medic says, great game info. And Outdoors says, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, great outdoors. And then in the second episode, which this one literally just went up within the last couple hours. So this hasn't been up long at all. Musaka has some, uh, some words of wisdom though, which I will read momentarily. So in the second episode, if you're still wanting to do this, I will keep an eye on it. But in the second episode, I did ask people to any tips that you think are really important for 
new players getting into RF4. Uh, to put those in the comments of the second episode. So, so far we've got, great to see you doing leveling again. I like this approach you're going with this time around. Maybe for upgrades on feeder setup, instead of going with Karma, Comfort, and Lacerdi kit, look at the Fantasia and Supercast 6000 reels. Uh, and bypass the Pulsar Saber reel. Still has good drag, 8.5, and mech 17.5. Holds a crazy amount of line. Paired with a 14 kilo rod will make feeder fishing much more relaxed. Congrats on your Braves winning the World Series. You've waited many years to see this happen. Great content as always. Thanks so much. And that is a great suggestion. I will try to, um, maybe even this episode, go take a second to look in the store and actually visualize those that gear that you're talking about to see kind of where that would fall in. Uh, but I like that suggestion because I do typically, and I'll still mention the path that I normally take no matter what we do, but I do typically go from the uh, starter feeder kits, which I think are still really solid with those Lacerti 2s, allow you to bream fish pretty effectively and efficiently. And I usually go from that right into the Saber 60s to troll at Corey, but we'll see. Nikki Persea says, second episode out already. Nice. And P. Swan says, you welcome back. Thank you so much. All right. We're all caught up. All caught up. Good job, everybody. And we're sitting at 19 fish in about 13 minutes, but only... About 10 markers, so just over 50% markers. Not too bad, especially the, especially with the size hooks we're using. Thank you, Nightmare Reel. All right. Now we can chill a bit. Yeah, so it seems to be doing pretty good with bread. I do think at night, it's kind of interesting to have worms on at night because you might occasionally get uh, a rough or a little later, like in the morning time, you might get Chinese sleeper or whatever. But So we'll go back to worm on the float for a bit. And maybe we want to go to bread instead of worm on the actual second feeder. Next time we catch a fish, maybe we'll do that. That was a quick bite. Wow. Nibble, nibble. I meant to keep that up because I wanted to go look at the shop to see exactly what gear we were talking about. Well, that was definitely, there we go. That was on, let me see, was that on the second one? Yes, that Musaka said that? Yeah, it was, okay. Is that another eyed? No, it's just a gibble, isn't it? Decent sized gibble. We're clipped here at seven and eight right now.
So at our other spot, we did have a couple of juicy ones up over a kilo. Haven't seen that yet here. And remember at level eight, we can start using the green hooks that are a little bit higher quality. Also can get a little smaller. We can go to 22 size if we want. Might help it winding to get a bit better success with the uh, smaller fish, the dace and um, some of the other ones we were trying to catch over there. Alright, definitely hit a lull here. Let's go, I want to make sure we're none of these cafe orders that um, that we might already have are about to expire. 84 hours. We actually can could go ahead and do this one, but how much time's left? 16 hours? Might be worth just going ahead and doing it. It's 24 silver. I mean, it's a really good order for us. Let's go ahead and hit that so we don't uh, we don't miss it. We may get there on Roach. Depends on how much. This is 10 silver, but there is tons of time left, so we'll hit that one in a minute. Okay. Oh, we had a fish get away. Interesting. Let's see if we can figure out which which rod or reel. I mean, which uh, yeah, rig it was. Well, it wasn't this one. Does that mean it was the float? For that to have happened on the float, that means the hook, the fish would have had to self. Okay, so it must have been this. Yeah, bait's gone. It's that one. So that's how you tell, by the way, is you um, you look at the rod using G, and if the bait is gone, that means that the fish was on there and then escaped. Which that is unusual to happen like that. Uh, that quickly on a feeder, they usually self hook and will stay for quite a while. Nice crucian. I mean, we are almost at the point now that we can set up that third feeder. Getting very close. Another nice one. Did I ever switch the uh, middle one to bread? That's actually a tench, isn't it? Let's go ahead and switch this to bread for the night. And then I think we've got worms on the float still. All right. Let's go ahead and put some more ground bait on there. So the ground bait we made was seven out of 10 because we've got those points in making ground bait.
There we go. Little guy. It's amazing. Our float's already up to 8.9. We're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good on float, even though we're switching more and more of our focus to to uh, to feed or at least here. I, I think we might go try to do some spot checking for the. Um, I wonder if we could get lucky on a bream. We need three of them. I just think that's very unlikely. Uh, currently, at least. So we have 41 silver. Let's go ahead and get our third feeder rod and the reel if we can afford it. So that we can see exactly, exactly how far we are. I think we do want to do this. It, it, it will help. All right, so we're almost there on the reel. We got the rod. Okay, so let's see what Musaka was suggesting real quick. So let's go to feeder rods. So typically what I do, and I'll probably at least get one of these, even if we do decide to do some variety, but I usually will get this feeder fishing start kit. If, if you're new to the game and just looking for a good uh, early thing to save for, I really like this. Um, you can go to Old Berg and, and target bream a little bit. Tinch, in some cases, it just depends on um, how active the carp are at your tinch spot. But And it does come with the Kama Comfort, the La 32, uh, and, and then everything you need to set it up. And it's a good value. Uh, you save a little bit by getting the kit. But what Musaka was saying here in terms of rod was to say to save a little more, I think, and to go with the Fantasia. Let's see where the Fantasia is. So Fantasia requires level 8. And let's see what the uh, load capacity, 14. So all of them are 14. And the test is fine in all of them. So it's about 300 silver. And then instead of the Supercast 6,000 reels, I, I do like those Supercast. How much do those cost? Um, let me see. Where are the Supercast? Uh, I'm just missing it, aren't I? I know exactly what he's talking about, but why do I not see it? It's got to be like right around in here, right? Eight point five drag. Oh, is it out of stock here? Yeah, it's out of stock here. That's why I can't see it. So we'll have to find it in stock somewhere to even see how much it costs because I don't remember. But obviously, that is a lot of saving compared to those kits. So yeah, some of it just depends on like how comfortable you are um, with the, the grind, you know, the early grind, like how long you want to save till you can get something that can reasonably well, you know, get bream in. But I do like those super cast reels a lot. If, if I remember correctly, and you, you made mention to this in your post, but I think they do have a really nice spool size compared to their level. Um, So it would make for a nice feeder, you know, early feeder reel. And also I'm sure would, would, you, could, you could make use of it. You could use it in, uh, at Quarry to doing the um, trolling. I did kind of just for fun want to do a little bit of trolling here at Mosquito. So once we have our third feeder rod set up, I might look at getting a starter spinning setup 
and then use our um, our starter, the Corona S60L, and you know a starter spinner to um, to 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 do a little bit of experimenting with with trolling. Uh, mosquito I know it's typically really slow but um, at least in the past when I've done it it has sometimes it's been okay you kind of can get get some eyed get a few perch maybe just sort of depends but it might be worth experimenting with it a little bit and then of course if that Christmas fair does happen there's some pretty cool like spinner baits and stuff that's available during that fair and at least some of them, I think, are fairly affordable. So it might be worth looking into. All right, right now we're at 26 fish. I guess we'll, other than going to eat real quick, get our free food, we'll just kind of sit over here and fish through the uh, morning hours at least. And then once again, we might go do, do a little bit of experimenting at winding with float fishing to finish up this episode, but we'll see. I guess the other thing we could do is I could go ahead and sell fish, right? Or at least finish, if, if there's any other cafe orders, sell enough to get our third feeder rod and then really like give this spot a few minutes of, I wish we'd get that next roach. That'd be 10 silver right there. We can do this easy. 10 silver. I mean, that's just free money right there. I don't want to do that yet. So that's back up to 14. What sells the best? There's eight more silver. Let's see where we're at. We need to get the reel and then our cage and... Um, I think we just get a spark 2000 save a silver no that's silly um all right then we need the line we're down to nine are we gonna just barely have enough here wait what do we need feeder 30 gram bite alarm Okay, so now we can get our third feeder in. And then we need to probably prioritize getting some hooks. Man, our float is submerged. It's submarining right now. These fish we're catching are worth nothing. Those small ones. All right, let's go ahead and get our our final one set up here. Um, let's do. It's back to daytime. I guess we'll just do bread. Oh, yay. Yes, one more float. All right, then we can set our float up to get it ready. Oh, nice sleeper. Holy cow. All right, let's do seven clip. And I'm going to cast this one a little more east here. All right. This is when you know you've arrived. You've got all three feeder rods set up so that when you want to do straight feeder fishing, that's an option. That gives us the uh, chance to start focusing on other things while we're fishing a little bit, a little bit easier. 
a little bit easier and we're almost to level eight which makes hook possibilities so it's kind of the goal here is if we could hit level eight before going back to winding we can nab one of those 22 hooks i think Ooh, pulled that too early i think we need one more sleeper we're not gonna let's see did we catch sleeper on bread just now no worm it's always worm right like we almost should go th straight across worm to see if we can get that third sleeper right let's do that really quick we also probably uh let's keep this one the same but like if we wanted to put a smaller hook on there that'll increase our chances too we know the sleepers are here at least a little bit and this is the time of day that you might get one or two. Hmm. What is this? It's a tench again. Nice. Those are good silver. And there's level eight. All right, let's go small worm. We'll see what happens. We'll see if that will grab a sleeper. Might do that on the middle one too. Thank you to JK Mayers. Antanahi. Sabaka132. Lunkikas. Lunkikas. Tomafu. <laughs> and Abovo. All the friendly friendly chatters in our in-game chat congratulating us on hit level eight all right so we're gonna go just like we did on the other we're gonna go small 20 worm just see if we can't get that sleeper real quick or a couple sleepers even because that cafe order is for non-marker size so we can even be picky and only sell the yeah this is the downsize right now we're like definitely playing right into the small crucian gibbles potentially but we'll see what happens but yeah definitely and so if yeah if any of you are fishing mosquito if you've hit any good spots for especially for rough sleepers common roach i'd really like to target common roach um even at this level like you can purchase peas and uh, use the maggots. I mean, you, you, we've got some baits available to us where we can catch some pretty decent roach. Just need to like try some spots out and find a, a decent place. I mean, I think over, over in G4 or down in F5, like in this area, sometimes there's been decent roach. It's also where I've seen bream sometimes bite at night. So there's definitely a lot of stuff we can still do here at Mosquito. Uh, that we haven't even touched and um, one of the more lucrative things is just to try to catch rough so once we have those smaller sized hooks not only does that let us there's a sleeper not only does that let us do stuff at winding with the bleak and stuff but it also will help us to target rough at night because when those cafe orders you get two or three rough cafe orders at the same time and just do a night of you know farming rough that's a 60, 70 silver night sometimes based on which orders are up. So can be good stuff. And I think, you know, we might even try rough, right? That's another nice sleeper. Look at this. I love catching sleepers. I think they're so cool looking. All right. So we've got the sleepers. Let's go back to uh, bread, at least on one of them. See if we can't get one more decent crucian or gibble on bread. So we hit level eight. Ooh. 
Ooh, might be too soon. No, we got it. Couldn't tell if that was still just nibbling or if that was a real deal. So even on these really small hooks, we're still landing some decent sized crucians. It's not bad. Yeah, it's been a good, it's been a good session of fishing here in this spot. I think next time, well, we'll see what we're doing next time, but we could, now that we have three feeders, we could go back to our other spot and kind of give that a fair shake again too. But it's, these are good little, I mean, we've had some, especially based on the cafe orders that we've been running into lately with all the Crucian Gibble stuff. These have been pretty lucrative spots for us early on. Another Crucian. And this is on size 20 hook, 1.1. Man, it's just the right time of day, right bait, I guess. Oh man, we've got a lot of new folks in our Discord channel. If you're wanting to join our in-game Discord, <coughs> sorry, not in-game, our Discord channel where we, uh, typically there's a lot of folks that are posting good fishing spots and, and then just hanging out sometimes. Um, I'm posting the link to the Discord channel at the bottom of these, of these episodes. So come join us but i i just want to acknowledge that a lot of folks have joined us in the last 24 hours so welcome to all of you that have decided to jump in either to the in-game chat which is of course my dogs my space w d a w g s i also have linking that in the video or into our discord so welcome to all the new folks Wonder if that supercast will be in stock at uh, I think we've caught enough here. I think let's let's I think we're gonna have enough silver to get those get at least one of the small hooks. Let's let's see. We'll get one more here. Well, we've got thirty eight fish plus we've turned in what two or three cafe orders. Did we get any more roach? We haven't. I think we go 16 maggot and 14 maggot. We're going to try to hit these roach real quick right off the dock, I think. Come on. I don't want to miss I don't want to miss this last this last bite we've got going. This Kansas City game is pathetic. I hope he gets traded. This organization is like falling apart. The Raiders, they've had a rough year with like that coaching stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. 
chiefs have uh, showed up today. Cowboy's still crushing it. Man, this bite's taking way too long. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it and come back. I think what I want to do is um, throw these off the dock. We'll still go to winding briefly, but we're going to do some roach experiments real quick. Let's just uh, take our clip off. So this is not going to be exact science here. It's going to go straight out over here. And kind of straight out over here. Let's move this one a little closer. All right, and we also, I want to get the... Um, if it's a really active roach spot, peas can work really well. Um, but the roach have really got to be there. It's a little bit risky, but we're going to get... They're cheap. It's one of those baits that's cheap. And that's one thing we haven't done enough of in this series so far is just experimenting with different baits. I'll try to be mindful of that. Now that we have three feeders, I'm more comfortable doing that. We can put two sort of ideal baits out and then just kind of experiment on the third one more. Um, so we'll try to do that some. What do we have? Is this, yeah, 3.1? Okay. I couldn't remember how this first one was set up. A little gibble. All right, so now we're going to go, I'm going to go peas. And the other thing we want to do is make actual roach mix instead of using the crucian gibble. Not that it won't work, but that, that common roach ground bait, it does help you uh, target the roach some. And we want to cast really shallow on this one. I just want to see if they're just right here in front of the dock. All right, so I know it's what, blood worm? Is it caramel? Let me see what the common roach mix is. Crackers, blood worm, caramel. Where are we on silver right now? Very little. Okay, we're not gonna be able to do this yet. That's okay. Um, we'll see if we have anything on the lines. What if we hooked into here on maggots? I mean, it could be a roach, but it's it's a nice one if it's a roach. It's not running much. It's just sort of heavy. Now it's running. This fish is coming off. I don't think we'll be able to hold it. What have we hooked into? Maybe a tench? You know, like a one kilo tench will just, on this small little setup... It will do unfriendly things to you. I don't really want to put it down. It's starting to move now. That was a heck of a catch, by the way. I did not expect Cleveland to be up by that much against Baltimore. Come on now. Uh, maybe it's a common carp. You, you wouldn't think a tench would still have this much. If it's like a one kilo tench, you'd think it'd be about tired. But if it's a kilo and a half common carp, two kilo common carp, something like that, or if it's just a little bit bigger tench, maybe. Have a little bit more endurance, maybe. It's not running fast. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's, it's a very steady...
It's a very steady thing here. It's either just sitting or steadily kind of moving, but it doesn't have that run going that some fish you, you, you expect to, when, they're, when they're mad at you. I'm just going to keep reeling and hope for the best here. Unless it really pulls hard. I'd rather not blow the reel. But I'd love to see what this is. We definitely made some progress there. I think we're getting there. Maggots? A late morning bream? I have no idea what this is. It's got a little girth to it. Again, the weight, it just feels like a heavy little fish for this gear. What is that? It's a tinch. It's going to be our best fish ever, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So my first guess was right. It might be a little over a kilo. Wow. Wow. That was a fish and a half. Also a little tinch. So what this is telling me is, um, you know, look, nothing on this, on the peas. What this is telling me is that there just aren't roach where we're fishing. We're going to cast this as far as we can. What just happened? Oh, the, the clip is still on this one. Hold on. I want to cast this. If you look at the map, we're casting towards that four meter hole. I just want to get that farther out and see. See what if anything happens out there. Okay, let's check cafe. Um, <laughs> we, roach experiment so far, not working. Um, how much time's left on this? Four days, plenty of time. I think we just go and do it. It's not like that 152 gram sleeper's worth anything. So there's yet another cafe. I mean, this is what you want to do, right? You just want to kill that cafe. Uh, as much as you can. I think there's a fish on this middle line. Definitely got a little wear from that last fight. So we're back up to eight silver. We're going to be able to afford a couple hooks. Eight plus at least 27 more. Are the hooks here or at winding? I know there were 22 somewhere, right? So get one of these. And then if winding has a 24, we'll get it. But I don't think it did. I think there were 22 is the lowest we can go at this, at this point. And really, we want two of those 22s at least because we want to be able to target rough at night sometimes here at Mosquito. Hey, there's a roach. That's a roach. And our peas caught something. Chances are the, that's a roach as well. Oh, we'll put casters on because we're out of maggots. Need to go purchase some more maggots. I also didn't fill that up with ground bait again, but that's okay. All right, let's see what this is. I think it'll be a roach. Peas at Mosquito are typically really good at targeting roach. Um, yeah, we really cast this way out there, didn't we? That's got to be a roach, right? Oh, it's a little bream. That's the other thing, right? Bream will like those peas sometimes too. 
but it's you know it's a weird time of day for a bream to be hook, hooking in it was very small though obviously so we're one roach short we need maggots don't we um, let's sell our sleeper it's nice silver if you can get good size sleepers they add up for sure kind of like uh, kind of like the roof the rough do so maggots 30 more maggots of course what we would really love to be using in this spot right now is pearl barley but we can't craft pearl barley yet so we've got some work left to do before before that's an option but pearl barley is such a great bait uh, for for mosquito all right is this going to be our fifth roach nope a white bream Okay, now I'm kind of curious. These casters might keep them on for a minute. All right, this is a maggot. Is this a roach? Yeah, all right. Let's see if those all work size-wise for the roach order. Maggots and roach, we're talking about some gross stuff right now. Yeah, that's 10 silver. And a lot of those roach wouldn't have sold for anything. Perfect. Okay. And it's a good time of day. Let's go do some experimenting on bleak. All right. So what we want to use is this. And at the very least, we're going to use that new um, 22 hook. We might even go 24, but I don't think they're going to be in stock. We'll see what peas. Let's see what the second fish on peas is going to be. Looks like we're in the process of hooking into something. But besides, you know, bait and hooks, and I think our next priority is, is shovel and cooking supplies. I think that's it. I mean, that's probably what the next episode will be, will be uh, saving for and trying to focus on. Okay, P, P's number two. Let's see what this is. It's a bream again. We just can't find the, the roach, at least not consistently. This probably isn't the spot. Casters number two. It did hit a roach that time. Okay. 24 more silver. We're up to 36. Most expensive fish. That would have been that, um, that tench, obviously. We'll get our free worms real quick, and then we'll head to winding. So for the free worms, we want to hit Y. Double check the hooks. I think we go ahead and get a second one just so I don't forget if they have them here as well. They don't. So we need to get that 22 at Mosquito. So that's probably the last thing we'll do is get one more um, one more hook at Mosquito before they go out of stock there as well. Okay, so the only difference in now versus last time we did that this is that we have even smaller hook on. Let's see let's see if it um, if it helps. I guess we might need a few more bloodworms before we go 
trying anywhere else. All right, that's a good sign. It's a little bleak. Ugh. I bet if we had flies in this spot, we could kill it on bleak. But again, pearl barley. Pearl barley can be a really good option too. We just can't make it yet. Pearl barley is such a versatile, low level bait. That's why I think that prioritizing leveling up your bait harvesting like as soon as you have whatever you're wanting to sort of focus on in terms of the early fishing gear whether it's three feeder rods or you know whatever it is for you as soon as you have that i think focusing on getting that bait harvesting i mean unless you're primarily doing spin fishing then you don't care as much but All right, let's run and try that other spot. I have no idea if this is active or not, but typically one of the best bleak spots is over here at the pond. We don't have a map, so I can't pull up the map. We don't have a map for winding yet, but this pond area for bleak can be really good if they are um, if they're active and if they don't mind the bloodworms versus since we don't have flies or um, pearl barley right now. And again, you can't see it, but basically just because I don't have a map, but, but anywhere in here and then just sort of casting straight out, a little farther cast, but kind of out in there. A lot of times the bleak are pretty active over here. And of course, if you're really hitting it hard, you might throw in two or three float rods at the same time. Which we do have that, um, yep, that is a bleak. We do have that bamboo, but it would just be, <laughs> it'd be hard to get that bamboo rod cast far enough. Notice all the bleak we're catching are um, less than marker size. I think if we had 24 hooks and if we had flies, we'd probably have a better percentage of markers. But according to what's on the cafe, sometimes you don't need, I mean, sometimes you can get some cafe orders done even with the small ones. But look how good this bite rate is right here on bleak. It's just been one fish after another. Now we're not seeing any, uh, not seeing any dace over here like we occasionally saw over by the bridge, but for bleak. That might be our, f oh, that's a sleeper. Since we're over here, let's just do, maggots and worms. Just to see if we catch anything on those. 
with a little bit smaller hooks. Not not 22s, but they are 20s. We've got four more blood worms. Hate that we messed that one up or missed that one. <laughs> we found the sleepers as well. So this pond here at Winding, you know, it's the only place on the map where there's no current. Because most of this map is a river. But this pond is very similar to fishing at Mosquito Lake. It's just a smaller area. But you're going to see a lot of the same results that you would at Mosquito in this pond. I need to watch that uh, float. It, something's nibbling. Yeah. But look, we only have one fish that's marker size right now. So we're definitely not dialed in, but the bleak are somewhat active over here. And there's obviously there's other stuff in the water. We've got really small hooks. I mean, if we want to catch roach and crucian gibble, that kind of stuff, we'd probably go back to a little bit larger hooks and put bread in. But I was just trying to see on maggots, worms, and blood worms and smaller hooks what all we'd catch over here in this spot. It's going to be another sleeper or something. The bleak, you know, they don't nibble that long typically. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's nothing. Yeah, see, I think we're... Let's see if we can cast it farther. Oh. All right, it's about as far as we can get it. Maybe that'll be back into bleak territory. Can't really set it down, though. We're just going to have to hold it, see if we get a quick nibble. Okay, there it goes. What is it though? Oops, did not mean to do that at all. Another roach, I think. It's a nice roach. All right. See if we can get one more fish on the float. That's weird. Am I standing in the right spot? It seemed like they were totally here when we first first started fishing it's getting a little later in the day for bleak they definitely don't bite overnight but you wouldn't think that they would have like shut off quite as abruptly as they did
They are really strong like early in the morning though. Hmm. It's a roach. All right. I don't know. I'm not sure. Seems like they're there though. We had five bleak in a row, right? Or four in a row. Maybe the first one was caught over by the bridge, but I don't know. Let's see if we get a lucky uh, bleak cafe order. Sometimes it is five undersized bleak. So there's a chance. If not, we'll just sell head back to mosquito and then wrap this one up. Like I said, I think next time we'll be focusing on, we'll have the option of going for rough at night if we want to, based on the cafe. And we'll try to focus on getting our cooking and digging started, which is really important at this point. Oh man, it's not the right bleak order, but that is a good one. And if we, you know, we're really dialed in on them, it'd be an easy one to do. We're gonna be not gonna hit any. And we only got 2.9 silver. All right, let's go back to Mosquito, get that hook, and then we will be done for today. We're in a good spot, though. We've got all three feeder rods going, leveling up feeder and float. And um, we've got some spots. We've got some more spots that we can try, especially here at Mosquito. So we're in, we're in a good place. Get one more of these. And the rest of the silver will save. So we're starting off with 31 silver. Um, let's see, what are we gonna be getting? We're gonna be getting a shovel, which costs 38. We're gonna be getting the tea kettle, which costs 19. And then we wanna be able to get some tea. Hopefully it is in stock. Yep. And start our cooking. There's a couple other things we need to get to, but we're getting there. We're not that far off. All right. Hey, as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know how your mosquito and winding fishing is going if you're also fishing here. And I will look forward to seeing you again very soon. Tight lines, everybody.